boy, do we have a doozy today. There has been a lot that's happened to the adjudication. I think that's a word. That's the word, right? Sure. All right, we'll go with it. A big change has been made, and we have a guest on today who we've wanted to have on for a while, um, but, but I think his opinions are going to be pretty eye-opening and interesting on this topic. So, Yeah, today we got a, a good friend, a past, uh, I guess, instructor, now friend of both mine and uh, Mike, uh, Josh Bricky, who's had a wealth of knowledge and years in the activity going through Carolina Crown, Blue Coats, Rhythm X from its early years for many years, uh, taught Rhythm X, taught Blue Coats, taught Crown, taught a plethora of high schools in the Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus area, still teaches Rhythm X, still works Centerville, right? Still so, Centerville, yeah. Yeah, so grinding it out, getting the old, uh, the youth, uh, keeping them churning. But yeah, uh, we're excited to have you on, Jay Bricks. <laughs> Thanks. It should be and fun. So, yep. And so before we get, before we dive right in, uh, welcome everyone to the Aged Out Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Fantini, and with me as always is Evan, Evan Worrell. Worrell. Sorry, not listening. Pause. I'm blank. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, and before we dive in again, uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow us on Spotify, um, like the Facebook page, and follow us on Instagram to make sure you get all the updates of new episodes and developments of the podcast. And without further ado, let's just jump in. So well, I, in as I, I blanked because I forgot. I was like, man, I, you just stopped teaching Crossman, and I, that was the last one, and I completely left that off. <laughs> <laughs> the most recent uh, percussion caption head at, uh, at Crossman. But, <laughs> yeah. so, but. so, Evan, do you want to start by kind of giving an overview of – the massive change DCI has decided to make um, with on-field judges. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I don't know the extreme ins and outs. Uh, most of my knowledge of it came from learning about it from enraged social media posts, I guess. Uh, but DCI recently passed a vote based on what they called was member safety to take the percussion judge and brass and visual judge and limit them to what they're able to do on the field to the front sideline. And I believe two yards, they're allowed to get off the front sideline two yards. Like that really is going to make a difference. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. So basically the drum judge is not going to be able to get out of the field anymore <laughs> or the brass judge or the visual judge, which is a total backwards move. in in my opinion, for what the, what the activity needed. Yeah. But, I, I started hearing about this all over social media and could not believe it. Like I had just, I thought it was a joke for a little while until I started reading more and more and more and then finally realized, no, this is something really dumb they decided to do. Yeah, it, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, you know, it's a, it's a sticky process and how they came to the decision. As, I mean, honestly, it's been going on a long time. It's been field, having a field judge has been, especially from the percussion side of it, has um, needed to be defended year in and year out. So uh, they finally got their way, and uh, I don't think it was the right thing. Well, I think that masking it, the, a bunch of people saying, oh, it's based on member safety, member safety, like, we don't want the kids to get hurt. It's like, nobody's ever gotten hurt by a drum judge that I could ever recall. I've, ne I've never heard of it. I've, I've heard of one drum judge getting hurt. Um, I want to say it was around 2004, 2005, and it was uh, Charlie Poole. But he got hit by a color guard. Uh, he got hit by uh, color guard work. So, you know, I guess they can make the argument of judge safety. Um, yeah. And another part of, I guess, the rule that they voted on, too, was, like, the props and stuff. And I was sitting there thinking of that, too, long before the judges. Like, man, you got kids, like, standing on ramps that are, like, 15 feet tall. And you're over here talking about judge safety. Like, somebody's going to fall off something before they're going to get hit by a judge. Like, Well, I th I, yeah, I, I, think there, I think there's two sides to – there's two sides to the argument. Number one is, is this the right thing for the activity to do? Um, is this really going to improve the quality of performance? Is this going to create a new experience? And then the other side of it is the member safety. Um, you know, both, I have arguments for both, <laughs> um, you know, but I think that the member safety part of it is, it is super, super important, but I don't think they're going about it the right way. If you want to talk about member safety, 
Um, that is a very, very, very deep rabbit hole that DCI needs to look at very heavily. And near like the bottom of the list is maybe having judges off the field. There are so many other things that endanger members every single day and has nothing to do with a judge on the field. Yeah, if somebody's like, oh, what ways can we improve member safety? In my, in my immediate mind, I'm going to think, oh, maybe like limiting rehearsal hours or like having each core have like a nutritionist or a physical therapist or maybe – bingo thinking about the time they, they did do one thing in this summer about the heat when they were down in texas like oh when the heat index is a certain like limiting rehearsal hours like those are things that are much more i mean you think about the hours that you spend in rehearsal versus the 10 minutes that you're on the field like come on well if you if you i got really i got really heated about this the other day so the um, I just did some simple math about 90 days of every to everybody's on the road, spring training through finals around 90 days. If you do the number of hours in a day um, and then think about the number of shows that everybody does, does, which is about 30, you know, some go a little over, some are under um, every performance is around 11 minutes. If you divvy up the percentage of time that a, that a performer is on a field with a with a drum judge or any field judge out there, it is less than one percent of the time of your experience on on with a drum corps. So the decision they made about removing field judges affects literally one percent of a member's experience. The other ninety nine percent, we're just not are we just not going to talk about it? Are we just not going to we're not going to drop? Are we not going to talk about drum corps not having uh, trainers or physical therapists or nutritionists or people not uh, i mean travel is anybody inspecting these buses i mean is anybody, yeah i mean come on you gotta be kidding me people driving 10 hours through the night terrible rehearsing conditions i mean why is the why is the san antonio show in the middle of july at the hottest point in summer that doesn't seem very safe yeah i've always wondered that why they put texas in the middle of july why is there a show down there anyway that's Do also the food a good trucks point. Do the food trucks pass inspections each year? <laughs> yeah, that's they, another question. I mean, so if if the whole safety aspect is just a load of bull, what do you think the real motivations are? Like, what is the real motivation for them wanting to do this, if not what they're what they're putting out to the public? Well, number one, I don't think that members. I don't think their argument for member safety is bull. I think that they're they're being legit and honest about that. It's just maybe the priorities of of where that should la where that should be on the totem pole is wrong. <laughs> um, you know, I, in my experience at DCI and I've been at, I've been at the meetings, uh, the DCI meetings in January. Um, I've been at the, uh, the Sunday meeting, uh, after San Antonio over the summer. Um, every time that the percussion team has gotten together, we've had an opportunity to sit in the same room, which is always awesome to do. One of the things we have to talk about is how other captions are really pushing to get judges off the field. I do think that it might be a little bit of a safety issue, but I, I, um, I think it's more about other captions don't want to see a drum judge or any field judge ruining the visual ideas and ruining the visual moments. I mean, I've heard people say things like, oh, I saw this great moment from Santa Clara Vanguard last year completely ruined by a drum judge standing two feet from a marimba the whole time. Like I, I, like visual people in the activity that are active at top level drum corps saying things like that, and it, it just it doesn't make sense to me. It, uh, that, that's not, you know, when I when I was when, when I was a little kid and I started getting into drum corps, I, I when I was watching shows and I was blown away with the execution and I was like falling in love with the activity. Not one time in my mind did I ever think, why is that guy in a green shirt running around? Somebody told me he was a judge, and I said, cool. And I was able to block that out, and it was never an issue. Um, so to me, I think that there is a safety thing, and that might be what the that might be the uh, the Trojan horse here. Um, but I think that what it really is is the visual captions are are blaming drum judges, especially and infield judges, for for you know ruining the pictures and ruining the visual moments. Well, I always thought like you in the sense that I loved the fact that there were on field judges. To me, it's what keeps drum corps honest on that high expectation of, of attention to detail and a level of excellence that's expected at this point. I mean, I know before we started recording, I kind of brought up a point that I'll bring back up now of if you restrict where the judge can go, 
a lot of what a battery plays, like the intricate inner beats outside of the large rhythms they'll play in unison, will not cut through a horn line. It will not cut through, if they're on the back hash, the horn line's blowing the crowd's face off and they're ramming notes, no one's going to hear anything but the big rhythms. And so you're taking away every incentive for that group to spend rehearsal time cleaning that. Then you're going to have drum corps show up, maybe not the top, top groups, but I feel like you'll start seeing groups, their parts of their show are just levels below where the exposed moments are, where they write the drum feature on the front hash, on the 50, or whatever they do, so that two, y two yards off the front sideline, the judge can actually evaluate that. It's just gonna make them prioritize everything and just decrease the overall level of perfection you go for throughout the summer. It just Absolutely. seems like a cop out. And, and, well, and to me, that goes back to, again, when I was a little kid and I, got, I fell in love with drum corps, what makes drum corps so special? What makes DCI so special? And to me, that was always the absolute dedication to excellence. It was always that. It was um, that you were able, it was, it, when you made a drum corps and you had that opportunity, you were going to be able to achieve a level of clarity that was unmatched by any other marching idiom or activity. And you were held accountable with, by that, by having a drum judge stand in front of you in, in a close proximity and be able to call out like micro differences and micro ticks. And, and uh, I, they're at, you know, I saw somebody post this on social media the other day and it was somebody that I really, really respect. He, he just said, micro ticks separate places one through five. And that's absolutely true. I mean, what made DCI so unique and so special was that you were held to such a high standard for clarity. And in the drumline world, and what maybe other captions don't understand is that in the drumline world, those little tiny clarity differences are so small. It's it's a, a stick height that's one inch different. It's one person's beads here, one person's beads there. And you will never, ever understand that from the front sideline. You know, I, I had um, uh, had a lot of people this week, this week um, tell me that that they thought that it was totally reasonable to read clarity from a drum line from midway up Lucas Oil or wherever they have them sitting now. And my, <laughs> my response to them was I would send them a YouTube video of a, of a drum line. And I would say, is this clean or is this dirty? And they would say, well, I don't know. I'm not a drummer. And I said, then stop making decisions for drummers. Yeah, like, sure. If you can't, you can't look at a video where you're standing right in front of a drum line and you can't tell, then don't tell us where we should be sitting to read clarity. You have no clue what it takes to be perfectly clean on the field. You have no clue what it takes in the drum, in the drumline world. I was making uh, lots of facetious and like backhanded memes over the course of the past week and sending them out uh, in response to this. And one of the ones I made was, were those tap drags or those slam drags? I don't know, couldn't tell. And like, those are things like you're talking about things that separate the top five. Like, are you coming through playing like an intricate flam passage where the grace notes are lined up? I mean, with a 130 member horn line blaring in front of you, you're never going to tell. You're just not going to know what those small differences are. And what you're asking the judges do is use, you're creating a harder situation for the judges because the sample size that they're going to have from when those groups are up front is going to be so small. I mean, they already only have 11 minutes, but now they're probably going to maybe get a minute and a half to two minutes worth of time where they can truly hear the battery up close. And you're asking them to separate 20 to 30 groups on two and a half to three minutes worth of small music from the drum line. That's pretty rough. We're, we're, we're setting the judges up to fail. You know, it was a couple of years ago when the, you know, last year we did the field judge at every show. And then at the regionals, we added music analysis judge upstairs, music analysis two. That was a, I was a great, I was a system that I thought was best at the time, you know, but before that it was flipped. You had a drum judge upstairs and then at regionals, you'd get them on the field. And I, I, I was always blown away by that because it, everybody likes to complain about judging. You know, that's one thing that caption heads never, that's what we always did was complain about judging. But are we setting them up to be good judges? I mean, when you only get five shows with a field judge, I mean, you really, how would you feel if your finals performance was your fifth show of the summer? I would feel really, really terrible about my group at, at the fifth show of the summer, if that was my finals level. But that's exactly what we were doing to the judges is we, we were giving them 
five total shows, you maybe got two or three reads from one judge during those five shows. Um, but it was, we were not setting them up, up to be successful, but then we're asking them to make the most important decisions, rank the top groups. And, you know, what ended up happening was most of the popular groups just placed really high and everybody kind of stayed in the ordinals of, of the year before. And, and, you know, I always thought that was unfortunate because I always had the feeling of it mattered what it mattered more what the, the name on your food truck was than what you actually did on the field at times. And yes. I thought last year, when we put the field judge on the field, you saw a couple things change. You saw some of those bottom six groups start creeping in and catching up to some people. And you also saw some of those top six groups really getting exposed. Um, and, and they were getting called out for not being very clean on the field. Like the blue coats. No comment. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. I'll throw it out there. Yeah, they, they, they were one, but there was others also. And you know, Yeah, the, that happened to the cadets. I, I mean, cadets were, cadets were fantastic. I, they were my, probably my two, favorite book of last summer. Ago, two years ago, Tom's first year back at cadets, that drum line was absolutely fantastic. And they didn't get very much credit for it, and they deserved way more. Yep. Evan, was that Andrew Kane's age out in the quad yeah. line? Okay. Yeah, that drum line was... That was the church show, right? The Bernstein show. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that drum line was phenomenal. And, and if you if you look at that six through like thirteen, fourteen, there are some good drum lines in there that just don't get any credit. Yeah, they don't get anywhere near the credit they deserve. And there there are there are groups at the top that get a lot of credit they don't deserve. I I love the Blue Devils. I'm a huge fan, but I've always said they shouldn't win a single drum show until late July. I think there are members in the Blue Devils that would probably also yeah. tell you that. And that's I mean, nothing we have say. Ryan Ellis on here, and he said the exact same thing. He goes, they, we know we're they, bad they, in June. They take such a high level of, of difficulty that there, there are groups that are just cleaner than for actually judging clarity than it needed, to be, it needed to be flipped. And that got way closer last year because we put somebody on the field. Now we're getting rid of the field judge again, and it's going to go back to the exact same way that it was where, you know, Everybody, everybody's getting a GE tape, and if I like your show, you're going to place well. Yeah, and I think a lot of people too. I saw, like, I saw some of the same comments that you were referring to, Josh. People like, oh, it sounds like all the people that have a beef with this are like the battery people. It's like, well, shouldn't we be the ones that have the highest say because we have the most knowledge on it? Right. Uh, and a bunch of people were saying like, well. Now the pit's going to get a better read. And I'm like, well, that's good for the pit then, but it's at the complete detriment to the battery. So why do we have to have one without the other? Well, so. and my argument to that, I always said the perfect system for the, just for the percussion world was a battery judge and a front ensemble judge. Mm -hmm. Two field judges. One stays in front of the front ensemble. One stays with the battery the whole time. That way you get everything. You average those scores. You still have music analysis too to get the full picture. That's what I was getting ready to say. You'll still have a music judge up top that can be your box judge, basically, to tell you right. how the percussion is fitting with the big picture. But, I mean, DCI is not going to pay for another judge. And, and you know, in the meetings that I've been to in the past, you know, when, when both systems aren't really ideal for us and they're not ideal for what everybody else wants, there we've talked many times about the WGI judging system, which is put the, put the, the music judge in, like, the fourth or fifth row right on the fifty. Um, the problem with being on the field, what other people don't understand, is that when they're at field level at the front ensemble, the drum line gets washed away with the sound. Like the, the, the sound trying to cut through the horn members through the front ensemble, you don't get a great sound. If you can put them up four or five rows, then they can hear everything. And that's a way better compromise. And when, when we've when we've talked about that in the past, it immediately gets shut down because you want to lose that that ticket money. Those are those are the high selling seats for the for the high prices, and they're not willing to to, to compromise. So, the the percussion community, yeah, they're they're, they're going to act pretty butthurt right now, and I think that they deserve to, to feel that way because they're we're not getting there's no compromise. There's there's no middle ground that's that we feel is going to make uh, the percussion side of the activity fair. And every time that we've tried to propose a compromise in the past, it just it just gets turned away. Because uh, we can't afford this, or we don't want to give up these ticket prices, or whatever it is, and you know, I really feel like the percussion community is is taking a, a um, taking a left hook here from the activity, and it really doesn't makes us feel like uh, what we do doesn't matter as much anymore. Um, and we don't have to be clean. Yeah, it, I just always kind of I was making so many just 
comments to people in, in Facebook messages and text messages and stuff. And I was texting Jared Thomas back and forth over in Australia, and he's all he's all hot about it. And I was just basically saying, I was like, yeah, man, as a member, if you're repping some chunk that you are on the back hash and like the mellophones are in front of you just blasting and like somebody's like, dude, you keep ticking. I just be like, it's all right, man. Like nobody over here. Like whatever. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> and then there are like judges too, who would even say on their tapes, if they're standing in front of the quads, like even if they're out on the field and they're in front of the quad line and maybe they hear something from the snare line, even if they're like 10 feet away, they might say like, oh, I'm slightly out of position. That sounded a little fuzzy, but just take that with a grain of salt. So they're recognizing that they're out of position to make the call. But now what we're doing is we're just putting those folks permanently out of position to make calls. Well, and the other thing to consider with putting a judge up top, and this was the big issue for me, is everybody's only thinking about that at Lucas Oil, right? Lucas Oil, that's going to suck because they're really high up. Um, think about the Alamo Dome, how, how echoey that place is up top. That's where the judge goes. He's going to go up top. The worst thing that's going to happen is when you do a lot of the local shows, the drum judge goes in a press box. So not only are they out of position, they're too high up and they're trying to judge clarity. They're also in like a, if you're on the East coast, you're in a really small like brick press box where the windows only open to 90 degrees. So you, you miss half the field. And if the drum line's on side two and the window happens to open that way on a hinge, you don't even hear that, that show. I mean, I, I, I did a show, um, it was in New Jersey, and Peter Fernari was judging, and he had, it was, it, the, the windows didn't slide open, they opened on a hinge. And so he said, he, on the tape, he said, you know, basically anything that happened on side two, I couldn't hear at all. And that's, that, that's what we just voted to put in place permanently. How stupid is that? It's so stupid. Ugh, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I no. think I made a Facebook post. I was like, we might as well just start judging from the parking lot with the lot drill or put GoPros on the cameras before they start the show and then take them off, upload all the videos to YouTube and judge them two days later and then hand out the French Sanford that way. Just, just put them at Basie's. <laughs> put them at Basie's. <laughs> the bar across the street. Oh, my gosh. Um, something I hadn't thought about with all this until I think – I randomly decided to listen to the quarterfinals tape that Anya put on YouTube of our 2012 uh, season at the end of the season. We're not going to get judges tapes like that anymore. Nope. Like we're not going to be able to go back. Like Evan, I think you listen to the 08 phantom tape like regularly because listen, that's just awesome to, to be able to be that up close to them and have that um, record of that level of excellence. And then listen to the judge evaluating it and freaking out when it's perfect. Like that's some of my most enjoyable memories of drum corps is getting a hold of finals tapes, getting a it, hold of judge absolutely. tapes to really hear what was going on. And they used to put them on the DVDs. Yeah. You know, I, I and that, that's a big thing. I, I made this post and I, I just, I was like a, just a comment on, on a post that it got buried, but I, I, it has anybody thought about what the members feel about this? I mean, this is a member based activity. I mean, let's let's be honest. I mean, this this should be about the performers. It should be about the members. And I don't know a single member that I've ever run into that said, I hate judges on the field. I don't like it. In the drumline world, you you hyped the shit out of that. When you when you knew that Alan Christian was on the field in three days, you got excited about it. I remember back when I was getting into drum corps, I uh, YouTube wasn't a thing. Um, I used to get on uh, LimeWire. Yes, and I would just search drum core audio clips and most of them would be unlabeled. I, I heard the 95 Cavaliers drum break about a hundred times before I ever knew it was the 95 Cavaliers drum break because it was just labeled drum core. But every once in a while when I was searching though, you'd find, you'd find the Holy grail. You'd find an old judges tape and it was the coolest thing ever. I will never forget listening to the 94 cadets tape from Charlie Poole. I've listened to that thing hundreds of times. Or you hear Chuck King's tape from 93 Star. Star of Indiana. The 93, yeah, man. I, mean, I remember I heard that on LimeWire. And but, like it just gives you goosebumps. It yes. completely inserts you into what that dude was experiencing yeah. on the field. Or like 
uh, Jeff Prosper, he'd just be like, ooh, I got goosebumps, and he's yep. just, like, digging it. I remember my 09 tape at semifinals, like, he was right there at the end of one of the tunes, just standing, like, two feet away from me, and I'm just, like, nailing it. He's just like, uh, you can let him hear on the, say on the tape, good job, and I'm like, yep. Yeah. That, that, that's an experience that I, I always, I loved that. And, and I loved it the years that I marched, I got the drum tapes on the DVDs. My age out show, I've got, I've got Alan Christensen's tape of my finals run. And, um, you know, that, that's a sort of just a personal experience and an energy that was so unique. And I think it was really what made DCI special. And it made it really, because, you know, back in the 90s and early 2000s, before WGI, had fi- before, before they figured out what they were doing, there was only one place to go for clean drum lines. There's two places to go. It was DCI and if you made UNT's line. Those are the only clean drum lines in the, in the world at that point. Maybe Moorhead. I'll give you, throw you guys a little bit of a bone. But like that was kind of it. Nowadays, I mean, WGI is just as clean as DCI. I mean, the, the lines now, those, those top tier lines are just as clean. So now that you can get the clean experience and you get judged better in WGI now, I mean, what, what's making you want to go, go, do, go do DCI? Pay way more money to not be able to sleep in your bed and you take know. out student loan. <laughs> yeah. kids, kids are taking out student loans now to March Drum Corps. Like are we want to talk about safe That's a mem- thing? Safe- Yeah, you want to talk about member safety? How about we make drum corps more affordable? But how do you do that? <laughs> Putting them in how debt. How do you do that? Is the question. Well, they'd have more regional shows, but that's another yeah. topic for um, that's another. Fair. But yeah, in. So we're talking about like the performers and stuff and how they hyped. And plus, I, those judges tapes being on those DVDs were just – it was accountability. Like you'd be like, yeah, this was the best group. Like you listen to that 04 DCI finals tape and you listen to that Vanguard drum line playing in an integrated form, oh, yeah. just nailing it. And you're like, yeah, they yeah. were the best. Uh, but now like the tapes are all hidden and you have to like search for them and – Obviously, now they voted. We don't even have them. Imagine right. as a percussion captain head or an arranger going into a critique and being like, why'd you put this group over? Like, I just liked it more. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, did they play better? Sounded like it. Maybe. I don't know. Right. P- possibly. Well, and you know what's funny is uh, with the critique thing, the only shows you don't have critique are regionals. So the biggest shows with the best judging, you don't get a chance to talk to anybody. Oof. Yeah, I mean it's it's a mess of a system. The system they had in place had things to iron out, but I just think it took a. I mean, my opinion, it just took a huge turn for the worse. I just I just don't think it's I don't think it's right. No, I don't I don't either, and I don't think that. And I was talking to some other people that I teach with. I was like, man, what you just said, WGS kind of the the hot ticket now with all the other stuff that's going on with DCI and besides the judging and the the controversy with like cores and all the sexual harassment and this and that and i was like man dc i was getting hot yeah there's a lot, a lot of seats that are starting to warm up over there mm-hmm, for sure and, and that's unfortunate and you know that that sucks you know because i love drum corps i really do i i i was a member and i've, I've been involved for a long time and I, I nobody wants to nobody wants to see it fail um drum corps made all of us a part of who we are you know, it, it, a lot of us grew up so much with that experience, and for sure, I want I want members to continue to have that experience. But you know, every once in a while, you got to look in the mirror and say, "Whoa, you know this this is wrong. This is wrong. This has been wrong for a long time. We got to fix it." And I, you know, I, I that's what that's what upset me so much about this decision. It was I feel like I felt like there were so many other things that needed to be talked about way before field judging. Like we talked, I mean, it's one percent of the, of an experience. One percent of your time on the road is on a field with a judge in front of you. You know, I mean, the member safety thing. And I, I really, I was really disappointed that that was kind of the the selling point was is member safety thing. And, and be fair, that's not a recent thing. Like that's been talked about for a while. It's not the stuff that happened recently. Um, you know, that that's been the argument for a while. But I mean. You know, if we want to talk about member safety, and I think that we should, I think DCI really, really, really has to look at member safety and uh, get serious about it. But if we decide to do that, if they decide to do that, they need to understand that it is a deep rabbit hole and a lot of things that they're not going to want to talk about. You know? Yeah. Well, let's. I think member safety was used as a scape. 
was used as a scapegoat for visual people finally being like, ooh, we can pass this member safety to get judges off the field so that we can have our pretty visual moments and do this and that. Well, well sure. Yeah, and I, like, I, like I said, I don't think that they said it with a smirk on their face. I don't think that there was an agenda that we're going to say this because that way we'll get our way. I think they really feel that way. But, you know, if, if we're going to talk about member safety, let's talk about member safety. Let's talk about what drum corps needs to be looking at. Well, let's, oh, show. Let, do you want to try to dive down that rabbit hole a little bit? Like, what would you say, Josh, is the number one or what should be the number one safety concern in DCI? Um, boy, so many. <laughs> um, I mean, because honestly, there's a lot, you know, if we're if we're if we're going to go down the member safety. So uh, how many people have you ever seen get hurt by a judge? None I, I, I honestly can't think of any. I remember a show my age out here, a tuba player got tripped by a drum judge. He was fine. Uh, though I can't really think about it. But, like, you know, how many people do you know uh, getting hit with a saber toss, getting stitches and, and hitting other sections and getting hit in the head? I mean, like, the number of guard injuries is absolutely absurd. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so members say, and that's not just, you know, that's – it's dangerous to themselves. It's dangerous to other people. They're literally throwing metal sabers in the air. Like, that's a problem. I mean, that, that's a safety issue. You know, people just with fatigue injuries. I mean, a kid, 2010 finals night, oh, had a compound fracture on the field because of a, an ongoing injury that he was just trying to push through, but yeah. he never got to rehabilitate himself all season. He, he had stress fractures that everybody knew about including the staff. Yep. And he was encouraged to be on the field. That yep. is not, that's not right. He broke his leg on finals night on the field. And then the bus driver broke his foot trying to go out and get him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, oh, that, man. that's a serious injury. I mean, if you, you want to talk, up. About, uh, you know, number one, spring training, you know, uh, unfortunately my second year at Crossman as caption head, uh, we lost a player. He uh, really damaged his knee. Um, and luckily, not luckily, it was all terrible, but the only good thing that came out of it was I got to talk to the doctor that he saw, an orthopedic doctor, was the orthopedics guy for the San Antonio Spurs. So he was the guy that dealt with all professional athletes in the San Antonio Spurs organization. So finely tuned professional athletes at the absolute peak of physical performance. And when I got to explain to him what we did in the hours of day, hour of, the number of hours that we rehearsed every day, he was blown away. He said, there is no way in hell that I would ever let a professional athlete put the number of hours in a day that you guys put in a day. <laughs> so to me, that might be the number one biggest safety issue. We, we 12 to 13 hours a day, every day, no matter what, at most you get three uh, free days, unless you're the Blue Devils. Like, uh, I got one one year. I, I got one one full free day at the first choir marched, and then the other two days ended up being half days where we still rehearsed. Yeah, I mean, laundry, and then you rehearse. <laughs> Evan yeah. and I have talked about this a lot on here about it might make more sense and staffs might get more out of their members because Evan and I have been getting into fitness over the past so many couple of years or whatever, and we've started learning about it and how the human body works and recovers. By the end of my first summer, I couldn't do anything except march and play that show and play that music. Yep. I couldn't do a single thing. I was so weak and beat down and it would almost make more sense to just try it one year where either rehearse a few hours less each day, or I would go as far as to say to take one or two days off, at least one day off every week to allow the human body to rebuild tissue. To, and, to, get the, to get the body to operate at its optimum level, it, ha it comes down to uh, what you put in your body. So food. Don't even get me started on drum core food. Calories do not equal nutrition. No. It's not high <laughs> enough in protein at all. I've been saying that not, for years. Not anywhere close. And, I mean, if you, you fill the kids up on pasta all day and, and cheap sauce, I mean, yeah, they're going to feel full for an hour. But BB and J's. Yep. Right. What you put in your body, the nutrition is not, not up to code, not up to par. And then recovery is just as important as building strength. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in my opinion, if you look at the NFL, who their training camp is uh, two, three-hour practices a day, 
you know, those are, those are 300 pound men that run a four, five forty. you know, those are like absolute in, insane physical specimens. And we put more hours in than they do. And what, and what ends up happening? What are the most common injuries that happen in, in drum corps? Muscles, uh, pull, shin splints, shin shin leg splints, injuries, tendonitis. I mean, all these just nagging injuries plantar, that are by fasciitis, plantar fasciitis, uh, all injuries that are preventable with rest. But what we do is we break down our body and then we don't properly eat while we're on the road. And then those muscles and tendons and ligaments never get to repair themselves ever. You know, I marched with a guy, my, my age out summer, he's a quad drummer. He, he, he pulled a muscle in his ass during spring training and he limped until finals. It never fixed itself. Didn't Jeff Brooks like perform at Blue Coats finals, like topped up on like pain meds or something like that? <laughs> now that he's representing our country, I don't know how much I want to say about that. But yeah, he did have a stress fracture in his foot. Hey, I mean, it was not like he's breaking a law. <laughs> no, 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 he was, yeah, he, he was, uh, he was on some some good uh, prescribed painkillers. Yeah, uh, yeah, prescribed. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. He, he marched on a, a, a stress fracture in his foot. Uh, and then, like, of course, he had. Oh my gosh, dude! But we're over here worried about judges, uh, right? And then, and member safety too. Of course, not that it's not much of a hot topic, but the emotional and no. safety that the, like the kids are in with like the people that are there, like the lack of background checks or like this and that, and the people. I mean. Come on now, let's get well, real. I will say on, the, on that, um, in everybody's defense, you know, like my time at Crossman, they followed the rules. Every single staff member had to have a background check in before they're allowed to be in front of any, any student. And I think that most drum corps do that, and that's why I think the pioneer issue was a problem. But uh, most drum corps follow that rule, and, and uh, so that one's th so that's in place, which is great. But along the same lines, there are also drum corps where there are twenty-one year olds showering with sixteen-year-olds. Yep. Anybody else think that that's a problem? I think that's a problem. You know? I always wondered about that, even and even when I was a member. I mean, there's, I mean, it's just, it's such. I think we talked about this with TJ Shaquette on the last podcast. Just the uniqueness of the activity in that sense, and because of what you just pointed out, Josh, it wouldn't surprise me if they turned open class into high school age under eighteen members, and then world class was eighteen to twenty one. At some point, I, I could see that. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I hope that that's not the way it goes because I think if a kid is, if a kid's seventeen years old and talented enough to march in the Blue Devils mellophone line, I hope that he would get that opportunity. He or she would get that opportunity. Um, you know, but you know, a long time ago, members and staff would shower together. Yeah. And then when everybody kind of got on board, now staff showers are mostly separate, from what I understand. But there's still. 16 year olds and 21 year olds in the same place without any clothes on. Yep. Or they're traveling on a bus together. You know, I mean, like, if, 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 again, safety is not, it is not a, uh, it's not something that should be taken lightly. And if we're, if we're going to get serious about it, which I think we should, there are so many bigger issues. Heat. No one should be rehearsing when it's over 100 degrees. At spring training last year at Crossman, and we're in San Antonio, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into there. Day two of spring training, it was 97 degrees and sunny. It stayed at least 97 degrees until the very last day. So we did, what, three and a half weeks every day in 97 plus degrees. And it got above 97. 97. I was like, heat index on the field is usually higher. Well, when you get on the new on the turf fields now, and it jumps up twenty degrees. I mean, it was, it was absolutely miserable, and it's not healthy. It's not healthy for thirteen, twelve to thirteen hours a day. You know, there for DCI when we, we went down to Texas last year, and DCI said, "Hey, it's way too hot to wear uniforms." That translates to me, me for me. That translates to it's too hot to do shit outside right now. But, <laughs> yeah, because the shows are at night when the sun goes down, and you're over here telling me we can't wear uniforms. Bro, we've been rehearsing for 10 right. hours. Absolutely. And, you know, like, there needs to be, if we're talking about safety, then there needs to be heat restrictions. And it can't be, okay, it's 115 in Texas. It needs to be uh, 94. It's above 94. Sorry. No one's allowed to be outside. That's the rule. I think at that point, you would just eliminate certain states at certain parts of the summer that you just can't go to. 
Absolutely. Or, you know, or like, well, it would cut down the travel costs not going down there. <laughs> sure, it sure would. Well, and you know, you talk about like uh, uh, rain. You know, you hear drum corps all the time. Some people, when it's raining, they go inside and they rehearse inside, and some stay outside, and they rehearse in the uh, in the rain all day. You know, I have I have for sure participated in rehearsal with trash bags on my drum, and uh, just standing outside for hours, just getting poured on. Oh yeah, me too. We did, uh, we did the garbage bags, like uh, I put my shoe, the garbage bags on my feet and then my feet and my shoes, yeah. so at least my socks were staying kind of dry. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I remember uh, one rehearsal specifically, it rained all day, we were outside just getting our butts kicked, and when the rehearsal was over, I took my shoes off and just threw them in the trash can. Yep, I did that when I was in Massachusetts. Yeah, totally ruined. So I, I think that the, the number of hours we put in a day has to be looked at, um, just might that make the drum corps not as good? Sure. That's the argument that we're going to hear, but are, are we talking about safety or not? I don't think it necessarily will make them not as good. I think you're going to have stronger performers if you do that. If you give their bodies time to recover, the next time you're out there doing basics, their legs are going to feel better. Yep. Their, their brain's going to be refreshed. They're not going to be suffering from just the beat down of the monotony. They're going to be more engaged. Your rehearsal time is going to be more effective as a result. Yeah. It's it's hard to use the Blue Devils as an example because they do obviously get a plethora of talent. But at the same time, it's like, well, they still rehearse less than everybody. And I think for a lot of years, too, the Cavaliers were, from people who marched there were in a similar boat. Like I talked to my friends and they didn't rehearse as much as groups that they were beating. And so I was like, some people say, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Are they better because they don't rehearse? Or are they better because they have better players? Or do better players go there because they don't rehearse as much? Like, well, I don't know, but they're better, so whatever. Well, it's, it's the it's the you know, unfortunately, a lot of DCI groups. I think that those groups are successful because the designers are absolutely incredible. The talent level is high, and I think that they do a good job of taking care of the members. They give them a great experience. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of other drum corps that have the uh, the philosophy of we're just going to outwork a, a not as good design. Um, you know, it's like the, the saying, you can't out train a bad diet, you know, you can't out train a, a bad design and a uh, drum corps do that when they don't place exactly where they want, or they need to catch up with other groups. They are, they, they decide we're just going to outwork them and we're going to put more hours in. And that's not always the best thing to do because I mean, no matter how clean you get, maybe your show is just not as good as the blue devils because they're that good, you know, and that's okay. But, you know, again, I, I the, the safety issue in DCI is, very serious and i and i hope that they talk about it and i hope they keep talking about it but judging on the field to me that that doesn't matter i don't think that was ever a, sa a real safety issue it's more of a distraction to people that want to see certain things um you know because uh you're not allowed to have drum judges on the field because it's not safe well the staff is on the field all day every day and there's more of them yeah well, the number of times that i've seen staff members you know run into people or kids get tripped during rehearsals so Okay, DCI, what are you gonna what are you gonna police? Are you gonna start policing rehearsals because it's not safe? Or are we just gonna leave it at the one percent of the summer experience? I witnessed with a group a uh, staff member enter the field on a rehearsal day and ebriated and caused several members to fall over because he got in the way of drill. <laughs> so it's like, okay, what are we talking about? Right. Well, and I, you know, DCI is in, a, in, in my opinion, they're in a pretty uh, touchy time right now. I mean, there's the, I was reading up about the Arsenal thing today. That's, that's, I don't know much about that, but yeah, elaborate on that a little bit. Evan and I were talking about that before you joined the call, and neither one of us are really up on it. So, Arsenal was a, a from my understanding, was a, a sound sport group, and they had um, applied to become an open class drum corps. Um, and they ended up making a post offering because Pioneer and Oregon Crusaders recently announced that, well, that they're not having a drum corps or not allowed to have a, a competing drum corps. So they made a post offering the members a, a, basically a discount. Um, I think they, they do something a lot. I don't know what it is, but something along the lines of like if you marched one year, you get $100 off your fees. Um, two years, $200. Um, and in their post, they apparently said something derogatory towards the other organizations for not giving a good experience. Which, from my understanding, is true. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone could argue that the pioneer uh, experience yeah. was not up to code. Um, but then DCI basically um, 
because of that said, because they made, they were derogatory towards a competing drum corps, which they're not competing drum corps anymore. They, I don't know if they said no to the application or they just put it on hold. Um, so now there's, you know, just seemed like a weird, with everything going on, seemed like a weird time to take a stance like that. <laughs> It's like you're coming down on this, but really right. no one cares about it but you. Yeah, it's just I don't know. It just seems like they're 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 priorities picking, their battles and they're just picking the wrong ones. You know, I mean, like I'm I'm worried that this all these safety issues that we're, everybody's talking about, um, you know, because the field judge was removed in the name of safety. Now I I have never heard so many people especially in social media, talking about safety issues and real ones. Like ones that I've actually seen kids get hurt. I've actually seen, uh, I've seen it with my own two eyes that this is a dangerous thing. You know, and now, I don't know, maybe maybe they kind of woke up a monster that a lot of people are going to start speaking up and maybe they should. Maybe they should. I mean, the the Hopkins thing and all that sort of stuff. I mean, we all know that, that that is just, that's not something that happened recently. Not not his scenario, but the whole idea, that whole uh, that whole concept, and that that whole idea of sexual harassment, and that's been going on for a long time, a long time, and it just got exposed. I mean, it, it's that, and I that's that's scary. That's scary because you know where DCI goes with it now is the important thing, and I, I'm sorry, but there there were other things that needed to be said and talked about, and it wasn't field judges. Field judges nope. were the problem. That's not what should be talked about right now. I mean, it's, it's you know, you, we're, we're, DCI is just getting exposed. Like that, you said, it's low on the totem pole. Yes. Is it an issue? Sure, probably. It's just not what everybody should be talking about. No. Nope. Drum judges, bring them back. I think, I think we'll see them come back. I think uh, this might last a year or two. But I predict, I think we'll see on-field judges come back within two or three seasons. I don't know. I don't share your optimism. <laughs> well, I've, just, well. I've, just been, I've been a part of those meetings for a couple years in a row. And every time we got together, it was, you know, all the powers that be on the percussion side of it. All of us talking about how we need to stay together. And, um, you know, they're, the, the, Viz, the Viz guys are coming after us again. And, and, you know, that's just the way it goes. And they finally got their way, and because of that, I don't think it'll it'll change. And unfortunately, the percussion guys are, were were kind of outnumbered. So I mean, I, I don't I don't think it'll it'll change, unfortunately, because I, I I think that we got rid of the one thing that made DCI the most unique and most special. You know, there's nothing like having that drum judge right in front of your face, and you're you're, you're you know you're you're nailing parts on the field and the snare line's cranking and, and it's just that that energy that experience it'll just it'll never be the same and yeah like you said just the momentum it creates just to have that execution happen like all the hours that you put in just paying off like right in front of this dude and just giving throwing down right and but now, I don't know, it's just, it's unfortunate. And, like, all these tapes that we just love to listen to and the accountability is just, like, kind of out the window. Yeah, I've always wanted, and if anybody important is listening out there to listen to this, this is what I think is would be perfect because my opinion clearly matters the most. Um, <laughs> battery judge, front ensemble judge, and if you want to make the activity more fair, make all tapes public. Make every tape public. If I go to a show and the Cavaliers are there and they're beating they're beating my butt in drums, I should be able to listen to their tape and go into critique and say, you gave them credit for X, Y, and Z, and you didn't give us credit for it. That's the way to make the activity fair. That's the way to stop feeding the top dogs and make it a fair level playing field is accountability, transparency. You know, I've always pushed for that and no one will do it. No one, every time I, I brought it up, it doesn't, doesn't get any traction, but you know, I want to hear some of those other tapes where, you know, where I go to shows and I know my group played really well that day and I was really impressed and I heard the groups that beat us and I was not impressed and the recaps come out and it was, didn't go my way, but it didn't go my way in a, in a substantial margin. I want to hear that tape because I know my kids play well. Yeah. 
I mean, there have been times and examples of because Evan, Evan is kept pretty well connected with a lot of people that we know that still teach in the activity at least better than I have. So him and I have gotten a hold of throughout the past few seasons various finals tapes or judges tapes from the same night and we've been My able black to do market of judge tapes yeah and we've been able to do exactly what you just said all right here's the recap um this group beat this group and we have both of their judges tapes and then we'll listen to them and go yeah i don't get no what that judge was thinking i mean i'm not gonna point there's a couple that come to mind i don't want to i mean evan if you want to out it you can i don't want to glucose 2016 well yeah that tape is interesting. Shock. Horrendous. Interesting. It's bad. <laughs> and like that's an example though where you could go to and be like, you gave this group second place with calling out all this stuff. Like he even called stuff on the tape. He's like, called all of it. But your comments didn't match your number. It's like, what is going on? And then you got groups down in like seventh place, like maybe like the cadets that year that was that the same year? Yeah, no, that was before, but or whatever, and you're just like <laughs> these groups are getting nailing stuff, and you're just like tanking them. Well, just I always ask a question, and you guys, you guys can answer this. Well, imagine if the group that I taught that year played had that tape. Where do you think they would finish? Oh, with that level of clear, like huh? clarity, mm-hmm. they get tanked. Just get absolutely dogged. We would get dead last, and don't even think about it. Yep, dude. So yeah, I yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think we're anywhere close to that system. Um, no, no, no. But that was what the that was kind of what I said. That was a beautiful thing about those tapes being on those DVDs. You got to listen to it. Like, yeah, they yep. called it right. Yep. So, ugh. dark times potentially coming for the activity. And, and you w- said it earlier, Josh. You're a huge drum corps fan. I like drum corps way more than I do WGI. I, yeah. I, I just I just do. The activity itself just excites me a whole lot more. As an audience member, as a member, it always did. Um, and it's just... Obviously, I've known WGI, for logistic reasons, was slowly rising in popularity and the impact it has on other facets of the activity and the direction things have gone from a design standpoint. And I, I've kind of been thinking for a while, and I, I know I've told Evan this, that... I think it was year I think when I was still marching when I was telling him this, like WGI is gonna surpass DCI. It's just it's just more it's convenient. happened. <laughs> it, well of course it already has happened. And I well, think and this I think just too, Mike, further is gonna DCI make that. that you liked the most was that it was just like so militaristic and like Josh was talking about the execution was just so flawless. And yeah, I think now with this role change you're just gonna start to experience more groups that just uh they're just coasting on there's coasting in parts, so well, we started to see that already the past couple of years. When like years that we took the field judge off and we had him at five shows for the last, uh, uh, I guess it's more than five, the regionals and finals week. Um, you know, you saw the quality go down, but I, I think that what WGI is doing is is incredible. I think that uh, the, the level of creativity uh, that goes on in the design because you're not restricted or you're not not the you're not uh, stuck having to have a ballot or, or whatever. I mean, it seems like WGI is super creative and adventurous. Um, I think that the playing and execution is now easily on par with DCI, if not a little better. Um, I, I just I think that what WGI offers now is just it's, it's just more appealing, and it's three thousand dollars cheaper. That's a big and point. more regional. It's close yeah. to home. You don't in have most to cases summers. I mean, there's just so many benefits that you can do that, and that's that's what makes me worry because I do love DCI. I think it's great. I mean, going to drum corps shows with, with my mom or uh, when I was young was some of my favorite memories that I've ever. I, I, they're the best. Um, I loved going to those shows. I used to love going down to the the, the Murfreesboro show every year when it was a two day show. Me and my mom would go down and uh, just spend two days being total drum corps nerds and. Um, I don't want to see DCI fail, and I, 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 I will, I will support DCI, and I, I think I always will. But, um, the next, the coming, you know, these re, these next couple uh, months, I think are going to be pretty telling as far as the direction of the activity. And I'm nervous that they're going to make bad decisions, and I'm nervous that if they keep going down the road they're going down now, DCI might not be here in five years, might not be here in ten years. You know, they're mm-hmm. they're maybe one major lawsuit away. Yeah, that's, you know? that's a very good point. And every drum corps now, I mean, 
in, in lieu of all the recent news going, that went into last summer, I'll be honest, teaching last summer was weird. It was weird. Like you had to be really, really cautious and like overly cautious at times, you know, and that, that's it. That sucks that DCI is in that, in that place. But let's be honest, we put ourselves there. We put ourselves there by being uh, unmanaged. Negligent. Yes, unmanaged, negligent, poorly policed for a long, long time. And so DCI is going to, unfortunately, what's going on now, they kind of deserve it. And, you know, I, I just hope that that they can keep what's important about DCI as, as the, like that, it's got to say the most important thing, and that is it's about the members. Yeah. Like, yeah. I hate I hate the, the decision to get the field judges off didn't require a member input. Yeah, yeah. And it, a lot of this sounds like a, I guess we've been kind of sound like downers, but I, we're just speaking our opinions on it. And obviously, our our outlook. But at the same time, like I'm gonna go to shows this summer, and like the kids that I teach that are marching groups, I'm gonna hype them. And like, well, if they're playing great, I'll hype them. I'm not gonna false hype. <laughs> I don't, I'm not into that. Uh, clean is clean, but. I mean, like you're saying, like the members, like I want those kids to have a great experience and I want them to strive, continue to strive for the same excellence that I guess we all did, no matter what. But For sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody that's ever competed in drum corps hopes that, you know, that I, everything kind of gets corrected and start doing things the right way. And um, all the members deserve that. I'll still go support groups and I'll still go visit kids that, are, that I have. I taught me high school and um you know i just i just hope that we're from here on out we're making decisions on the on the members behalf and not our own like a drum judge might be distracting to your drill form i understand but you took away an experience from the members a really unique one and a really special one mm-hmm. and, uh, that sucks that sucks for them it doesn't suck for me i don't have a dog in the fight anymore and i'm old so <laughs> it doesn't really matter but you know, the kids that are marching and spending way more money than I spent to march, they deserve that experience. And I feel like a, a group of staff members took that away from the members. That's very yeah. – yeah, that's true. Well said. Yep. That's uh, Time will tell for sure. We'll see you over the next couple of seasons. But, well, we've been talking and ranting and raving for going up on an hour now. So you guys want to hit <laughs> anything else or you want to just close this sucker out? Uh, I think I'm good. I think Jay Briggs is ready to get back in the gym. Yeah, he was saying he's going for round two soon. Cardio two today. Nice. Cardio two. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining us, as always. Again, just as a reminder, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow on Spotify and Instagram, like the Facebook page. It all helps. Uh, and we will just see everybody in a couple weeks, hopefully. Peace. Yeah.